Hello, in this video, we're going to be talking about reflexes. So let's not waste any of your time. Let's get right to it. Now, when we're talking reflexes, first thing we want to do is establish, hey, what we're talking about. Uh, and that's fairly easy to do. We've all experienced reflexes. We, we probably have multiple every day uh, and even some that maybe we don't even think about. Uh, but And they can come as, you know, from a, as drastic as a situation where you step on something sharp or something warm or you know there's just a lot of ways but what we're going to really do it is breaking down the individual sections uh, when it comes to uh, the information being processed and uh, reactions uh, made uh, even though it's a, it's a super quick and that's one of the properties you can see there super quick uh, process I mean you can't even put a stopwatch on a on a uh, reaction when you touch something that's warm or step on something sharp just how quickly uh, the process unfolds uh, but uh, the four properties uh, stimulation it's got to have some sort of stimulus I mean you don't want your reaction just occurring just because uh, I mean you don't want your hand jerking up uh, just randomly throughout the day uh, that's just uh, you don't you don't want that people are going to talk uh, and then, but they're involuntary. I mean, you don't want to, if you truly step on uh, on a nail or something sharp. I mean, you don't want to think about what needs to happen. Uh, that's too long. Um, uh, you got to get that up. And then the word stereotype. Uh, obviously, that's uh, something that's uh, something you don't want to do in regular life. But it's just in this case, it's a reference to it, it's the same way every time. Uh, the same thing happens uh, that way the the muscles have the fine-tuned uh, response to it and it occurs uh, flawlessly all right so what we're going to do now is to start to get into some of the the, the nuts and bolts to break down uh, what's going on with the with the uh, reflexes uh, and this screen here is just a reminder that the information is going to process the same way. Uh, it's just done so in a, in a quicker manner. And we've taken out one big aspect, uh, and that's the brain. We no longer use the brain as the uh, deciding... Uh, oh, what's the word I want to use? Is the one who makes a decision on what to do. That's the integrating center. Uh, which is just simply not so much a decision to be made, but as to where the decision needs to go to. But it happens the same way. You've got your receptor somewhere, skin, muscle, tendons, wherever. The afferent nerve fibers carry it away to the spinal cord. Uh, then it goes through what's called the integrating center. We're going to see a, a, a diagram of that here in a, when we start looking at the individual reflexes. I'll point that out. Uh, you know, it goes through the, uh, the the gray matter, as we've talked about, and then the integrating matter determines uh, which efferent neurons uh, need to be used. And then, of course, in the efferent neurons, as we've heard about, that carries it back to whichever muscle uh, needs to be enacted. And one thing we're going to see is that there are several layers of this uh, and for the most part, one of the ideas is, is balance. I mean, if you truly do pull your foot up off the ground, uh, your body has to make sure that the other leg is prepared for that, uh, or else we're going we're going to face first, and we could actually fall on the very object that you just get are trying to get away from. So, or could you know it could be a, in a big worse situation. So we're just going to see all kinds of things. And uh, there's going to be a lot of things that overlap, but we'll point those out. We'll break those down. All 
All right, so on this screen, we're going to talk about some properties uh, of a reflex. Because as, as you can imagine, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we talked uh, in a couple of videos ago about all the uh, messages that have to be sent in order to, as a wide receiver running down the field in the sprint, looking back, holding their hands up. Uh, and then catching uh, a football, same with an outfielder who's, who's running down a, a, a deep fly ball. Same thing with reflexes. Man, there's a lot going on in a short amount of time uh, just to make sure everything uh, is, is going on. Let's see. So not only the reflex occurs, but you got to think about other things, uh, as we've mentioned uh, a lot of this is on the screen. Again, there's a bunch, and you're going to want to capture it all. Uh, but some of the highlights is the fact, uh, and it's number two there, that during this reflex, the body has to stay upright. I um, mean, you can't be falling over. That's counterproductive. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just counterproductive. You don't want to fall over. I was trying to think of something, something clever to say there. So whether it's lifting your foot up, whether it's moving your hands, uh, whether it's some sort of other reaction to the to a, the stimulus, the reflex, it's got to you know make sure everything is uh, is going to be stayed kept safe. And the last one, the reciprocal inhibition. Uh, one thing we want to think about is that when you are lifting your hand up, you don't want the antagonist muscle putting it back down. Uh, you know, just like if you were to open your hand and then it closes or close it and then it opens, uh, you don't want the antagonist muscle or the opposite muscle working as well, which is what it does in a normal work situation. Uh, so there's a brief period of time that that is shut down. Uh, and then, of course, the idea of extensors or flexors. Uh, extensor muscles is the ones that do the first job, and then the flexors are the one that return it or work opposite of that uh, and we'll so we'll talk about those uh, in individuals and in some cases one muscle could be an extensor in one case and it turns around in the next situation it's the flexor uh, it's all situation dependent uh, and but we're going to talk about uh, each of those and then we'll get into that you can see the word monosynaptic reflex there uh, th that's a reference to when only one synapse is used to get this job done and there's polys and there's there's lots of other things and we'll talk about all those and their examples all right uh, the uh, first our first uh, reflex to look at is just the old simple uh, Hopefully you've experienced this to understand what's going on. You're at the doctor's office and they're testing your reflexes. Uh, they're not really seeing it. They're not really. They don't really care to see if you can move your leg. If you're, you know, it's not a paralysis uh, test. Uh, but that the, the 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 proper neurons for reflexes are firing. And uh, so you've got a breakdown here. You can see the one through six, and I, I'm not going to read. Or actually, it's eight. I'm not going to read the seven. I'm not going to read those to you. You can do that, but I'm just going to explain what's happening and where the important uh, parts are. And so here, so we start off with our extensor flexor. Uh, the very the diagram obviously is beside me here. At the very bottom, there at number one, uh, it points to the muscle fiber on t above the other fiber, the one on top. That's the extensor. The one below is the flexor. It's the one that's going to return the leg. So when that leg, that, that kneecap or right below the kneecap is tapped and that leg kicks up as a response, the flexor is the one that brings it uh, back down. Now, the, the part that's kind of towards the middle, that little white opening, uh, the white obviously is a tendon. That's connective tissue. What that's showing you inside of that, that's a muscle spindle. We're in muscle spindle is our next video. We'll break it down even more what it is. But it's essentially a sensory receptor. It's a, it's a pro-prio receptor that we've talked a couple of times about. Uh, one of the functions of the uh, pro-prio receptors is that they 
remind the or they alert the brain as to the progress of the motion and how things are going <clears throat> but they also and we'll see a breakdown of them when we talk about them but they're also full of efferent and it uh efferent and afferent uh afferent uh nerve fibers in other words they're sending messages out they're receiving messages uh, and those messages would have to do with you know if we need to correct the behavior or continue continue the motion whatever it might be but in the reflex arc you can see if you look at the uh, cross section of the, of the spinal cord there and the old butterfly the gray matter you can see the green and the red and the blue the, the little circles there and again if that's too small to make to uh, to uh, really understand or see it as always it's in the PowerPoint uh, it's in the textbook, so if you want a, a bigger image, just simply pause here and open one of those up. Uh, but where those circles are, that was the integrating center that we were talking about earlier. That's where the decision is made on what needs to be done. So, And you can see that uh, it goes into the gray matter, decision is made, and then right back out uh, the posterior root and right back to whatever the muscle it needs to be so you can see the part that's left out of the decision-making process or the process is the brain and you may be saying well I can see the word it says to brain up there uh, yes it, the brain does get a report about what happened but it's not part of the decision-making uh, process of, of what's going on now this is five. yeah so looking at this diagram the left hand side especially if you split the spinal cord symmetrically in half left and right uh, the left side of this diagram is all about uh, the extensor muscle and in the back half the right hand side is all about uh, the flexor muscle and the uh, response uh, because if, if you know in this situation uh, especially if you were standing and for some reason your leg had to kick out uh, you, the flexor would need to bring it back down to, to uh, uh, kick that uh, reflex now and you may think okay w when would this come into play in real life well it's just the idea of maybe being startled uh, something on the ground and the reflex is to kick out at it to move it away I know there's a bit involved in a few situations where maybe you're just uh, walking or jogging you know maybe you got some music on and then a dog appears uh, from the side whatever and just just catch a glimpse uh, of it out of your eye and you react you're, you know you can have a couple of reactions uh, some people may just be jumping away. Uh, me, I tend to be a you know put the foot out kind of a person. Uh, if that if that's really a type of person, but uh, but then you got to put that foot back. So the right hand side is getting that flexor muscle back. Now going back to and it's part four up there, uh, and we're we're going to talk about a couple of specialized neurons. In this case, it's the alpha. We'll talk about the gammas later on. But alpha neurons, they're a part of this process. Alpha neurons are specialized because they are quick responders. In other words, if you need a quick message sent, alpha neurons are what's used to uh, get that back. They're, they're built for speed, for lack of better terms. We'll talk about gammas later on. They're about fine motor control, but we'll talk about them in, in, the, in the right situation. But that's the idea of the process, the muscles, spindles, their part, um, the alpha neurons, the right hand, left hand side. And because we've got different things going on, okay, this would be a monosynaptic. Uh, it's only going through the one synapse to get the action done. But we're going to see some polysynaptic situations. Okay, so the I, I back up because I, I got ahead of myself there. The idea of getting that leg kicked up that would be the monosynaptic part, but the I, then then the process of putting it down 
that would be a poly because now we're using two uh, synapse to uh, get make that happen. So a lot of times we're going to see these words and you may say, okay, what's an example of a monosynaptic uh, arc? What's an example of a polysynaptic arc? And they can be working in tandem. Uh, it can be a part of the same reflex. So it isn't that I can point to a reflex and say, all right, that type of reflex is monosynaptic. That type is polysynaptic. Uh, monosynaptic is essentially going through the first synapse to get it through. And then the polysynaptic is the second one to get the complete job done. But just lifting of the kicking of the leg, that would be monosynaptic. The returning of the leg would include polysynaptic work. All right, our next type of reflex to look at is the withdraw. And when, in this case, when we say withdraw, we're really saying pull away from. So the hand on the burner, uh, the stepping on something sharp, you know, those are all withdraw. You know, maybe, and it could even be, it didn't have to be something sharp. You could be, you know, on a hike in the woods and, and your next step is going to land you on a, on a copperhead. Uh, and you snap your leg back up, pull it back up. Uh, or, you know, and some people can be, you know, you're walking in the woods and you step on, step on a stick and it snaps. That can startle some people and the leg comes up. You know, you can be walking somewhere where maybe it's fairly dark and maybe you touch something that causes your hand to pull back. Maybe it's spider web or, or you know, something wet maybe or just whatever. Um, a lot of things can can cause the the withdrawal um, reflex and then again there's a lot of things to to information there you want to be sure to to capture that uh, but it's also a example of and you can see the color-coded uh, diagram and in this case when you look at the cross section of the spinal cord you see a lot of things going on because there are multiple levels happening here because this case now your leg is up okay and the body has to be prepared for that or else we're just going to topple over so the again the left side is all about getting that extensor muscle away from the stimulus and then the left, right hand side is all about the flexor muscles uh, making the needed adjustments for that so you don't just topple over uh, and it, it and of course it shows hamstring and quads, but it'd be more than that. Your foot would have to be involved, uh, your calf muscles. There's situations where you have a reaction like this and then your calf muscles feel a little soreness because of just the quick uh, tenseness, quick contraction that they go through. Uh, but again, uh, the getting the flexor muscles to work, that would be the polysynaptic uh, part of what's going on and we'll talk about the, the the balance part on the next screen all right so when it comes to keeping uh, your balance uh, and again so we're talking the right hand side of the um, the cross section of the spinal cord there so the action has already been made uh, through the primary uh, afferent, nefferent, efferent, I mean, uh, neurons. And now we're so we're into that secondary level. Uh, again, you, but you can see the lots going on. The IC, the inter, uh, integration center, has decided, that, well, hey, we also got to get something else going on. And we're going to talk about uh, reflexes, types of reflexes at different uh arcways and uh, this would be one that would be cross uh, what's the E stand for uh, oh cross extensor yeah it's right there in front of me and so this would be a contralateral uh, reflex in other words you know you just got to work different parts of the body uh, to make sure that things happen uh, with the idea of just in this case not falling over uh, if you are jumping back away, then again, maybe your arms come into play to keep the balance. Uh, whatever's got to happen, 
the body is equipped to do multiple pathways uh, to make sure that everything is all right. All right, so the tendon reflex, and again, this is the another example of it's not a reflex all by itself. I mean, your tendons don't just reflex, but it's part of most of the other reflexes because as we know, if a muscle is going to move, then the tendon is going to be a part of that. And again, you can see that this is the quickest one, and their uh, tendon organs, which is the second word down on the on the list for the diagram over there. Uh, but essentially what's happening here is as, as part of a reflex, so this could be on the, on the extensor muscle that has to contract to pull away. This could be on the flexor muscle that's uh, accommodating the, the action. Uh, but essentially what's going on is that the tendon organs, which you can see over there, uh, those are receptors. Okay, Again, the proprio receptors, again, they are... Uh, alerting the brain as to what's going on, uh, but they're also receiving information, making decisions, uh, I shouldn't say making decisions, uh, carrying out the decisions that have been made uh, with the idea of, of keeping you safe. I mean, if you don't, uh, you don't want overwork or overload, you want, you want just the right amount needed. Uh, so they're simply just there to kind of, kind of make sure we don't over stress and injure ourselves. Uh, but that's the idea of, of tendons. But again, this is part of other reflexes. It's a small part of other reflexes. In our last screen here, uh, again, these are all, these are types of arcs. Uh, and again, these are parts of the reflexes. So they're not individual things. They're things within things. Uh, so, like a, for example, uh, an ipsolateral arc. That's the idea of, uh, you know, that first reaction. In some cases, it's only one reaction. Like if you're taking your hand off a burner, uh, there's not a lot of balance that needs to, to go on or, or reflexive. I mean, you may also pull your head back, uh, get your whole torso back. Uh, but a lot of times, just getting your hand back. I mean, if you've ever played that game where you slap hands, you got your hands up and you're trying to slap somebody's hands, you can pull your hand back as part of the game. You don't really move any part of your part of your body, but you're just respond, reacting to their movement. So, but that's an ipsolateral arc. Just one motion is going on, uh, and we looked at the cross extensor. Uh, that's a contralateral reflex arc. In other words, now two things are going going on we've got the first action but then we got a, a second action to counterbalance uh, the first action uh, and again lots of information above me there just be sure to capture it all uh, but the most interesting one in, the, in this case the other two we've already talked about but one we haven't mentioned yet is the intersegmental reflex arch that's one in which the input and output are at two different levels uh, so you, you put your hand in cold water and you weren't expecting it. Or maybe you were, you know, like you're getting, in, like for me, we get into the pool quite a bit and, and, and maybe it's been cooler the last few days or it's even, we've even had a rain that cools the water off. You get in there and that initial reaction to um, the cooler water is to what? Inhale, right? Be quick. <gasps> like that that's a intersegmental reflex arch because it may just be your legs that are in the water maybe your hand uh, you know your legs are in the water but the whole abdomen responds to that that's an intersegmental uh, where the stimulus was the reaction one of the reactions was somewhere else in a different level of the body uh, you could also you know you you uh, feel something with your foot and you move away from it uh, you know but the the abs is a, is a good example of that but it's just the idea of the of the reaction is somewhere at a different level of the body than the uh, stimulus well that's our video over reflexes uh, when we 
when we get together next time, we're going to be talking about the muscle spindles. So we'll see you then.